overlays. Uh, this is kind of one of our medium overlay systems uh, and the cost and the life uh, and protection for our bridge deck. Um, basically it's two layers of um, epoxy resin um, and then it's got a really hard aggregate um, that's, that's broadcast over it. So it's two layers. Uh, so you can see it gives you a nice, I mean it's, it, it looks like stone you know, across the whole surface of the deck when you're done. Um, hop back just for a second for deck repair. Um, because our provisions have some, some criteria. Our deck repair for our class twos and threes. If we're using a cementitious patch, it requires a 28 day cure um, before we put the epoxy, otherwise it will affect the bond. Um, sometimes we can get a letter from the manufacturer saying that they can't shorten that. But make sure you look in that, either hold them to the 28 days or make sure you have that letter gone through the residence office. Um, if they use an epoxy mortar, a lot of times they'll use that same epoxy, mix aggregate with it for their patches, um, then they don't have to wait that 28 days. They can, they can go sooner than that after that epoxy is cured out, whatever that time frame is in that literature. And again, I, it's shot blast somewhere in the five to six. Again, read the manufacturer's data for what they require. Uh, the approved products list, you guys should be familiar with where that is. Um, I just wanted to point this out because if you go looking for it, you look for epoxies in that product group right here, you're not going to find it. Epoxies and the epoxy overlay system, two, even though they're, they're both epoxies, it's, it's a different type of system. So you're going to look under structures and then there's a, a subcategory, um, maintenance bridge deck epoxy overlays. And if you are, you can type it in up here, or you can, when you search for structures, you can, uh, you can find that, and that lists all the systems that are approved. So um, make sure you check in that before they use it. Uh, the aggregate, it's a flint rock. Um, I, I've seen primarily one source. It's out of Oklahoma, Flint Rock Products. Um, Lanford Brothers and Ram, they're two of the major players that I've seen across the state. They both get it from there. There was a new contractor recently that was looking for a local source. And I don't know, I figure if Lambert and Ram haven't found one, then they probably are not going to. But uh, it just needs to meet our special provision. Um, they need to have a Type 3 manufacturer start to say that it, is, that it has met our special provision. Um, this Mohs hardness is just a scale of how hard the rock is, how resistant it is to scratching. We want a 7 or higher because we don't want an aggregate that's soft that's going to wear off under that traffic and wear out because we're relying on that, that stone uh, to make sure it's hard enough. Okay, this is a, can be a confusing part of your special provision. Um, there's two types of systems, a mechanical and a hand placement. Uh, the mechanical is only is going to be for our high volume roads. Um, the hand placement is allowed on the less than 5,000 ADT. They're pretty much, they're the same system, it's just how they put it down on the deck. And you have to read your special provision. We actually have two separate special provisions and you'll, you'll see which one applies to your contract. Um, whether it allows the hand placement or if it requires um, the mechanical. It's not real clear, so you have to kind of read it, that provision. Um, but basically, the mechanical has, um, you know, everything's probably on a truck. If it comes through a nozzle, they, it mixes it together um, through that nozzle, they place it, um, and then they, they have some kind of method of spreading the aggregate um, mechanically. Hand placement is really just putting it in drums, um, mixing it by hand with a paddle mixer, throwing the, the sand out or the, the stone out by hand and so that, that's really different. Same system, just two different ways of putting it down. So for the uh, buckets and paddle mixtures, they need to make sure they're pre-calibrating their bucket, their, their um, bins so that you know what, how much they're putting in there and so they're mixing it correctly because you're relying on humans to do it, make sure there's no human error. Um, they're mixing times, make sure they're following that. Obviously look at it, if you see streaks in it, you know it's not mixed all the way, make sure it's fully mixed. The mechanical, that's going to do it automatically, so it's, it's usually a one-to-one -one or two-to-one um, ratio. Make sure that's doing that correctly. And when they start or stop, um, the two components, that part A and B, the B is, has a lower viscosity. So it's, it's going to run out quicker. So when they first turn that nozzle on, you'll get some of that B before he starts getting good and mixed. It will run out. So you don't want to start and turn that nozzle when he's on the deck. Come off the deck in a bucket or something, start it. Once you get good flow, then they can come out on the deck. Same thing goes for when they, when they stop. <laughs> Make sure they have a bucket to dispense it because we don't want to be mixing it. Putting product down that's not mixed. It's going to affect the bond. You can see here is the mechanical system. He's putting it down and this guy is basically taking a squeegee and pushing that and spreading that material across the surface of that deck uniformly. 
And this is the hand placement. They've got their drum here, they've mixed it. Um, they've got the guys up here with their shovels ready to shovel aggregate on the deck. Um, you can see here this little spot right here, we'll talk a little bit more about it. That's their pre-test area that's required. There's two of them that's required, and we'll, we'll talk about that more in a minute. But um, if it passes, they come right on, fill in around it, uh, fill in the holes. Um, if it fails, they'll have to pull that out and figure out what's going on before they start their system. All right, uh, you got to make sure you put the aggregate down for the, the epoxy gels, and um, you make sure it's, it's you know spread somewhat vertically. You're not just throwing it on there too much and displacing the epoxy and pushing the epoxy because it, it can run some. So just make sure they're whatever system they're doing that they're uh, doing that correctly. Uh, you can see the different like four different examples. Um, these are mechanical ones. There's a guy just with a shovel, just basically spreading it out. And you're you're taking this to refusal. You know, some of our overlays are just kind of getting the surface covered a little bit. This is you're putting it on. You're putting excess on there until it's completely uh, filled with aggregate. Um, and then you can see here we've got, because we've got excess, they've got to sweep it off. Okay, so they're they're probing that off, vacuum whatever, um, cleaning that off that first layer. And again, remember this is two layers, so. You do that on the first one, when it sets up, you sweep all the excess aggregate off, get ready for your next one, next layer. So this is kind of just a little uh, diagram I've got just to kind of represent. So we place our epoxy, we got cracks. This epoxy is not as low viscosity as some of our epoxy, so it may not seep in the cracks as much as I've shown here, but it's going to kind of seal off everything. Um, your bigger cracks is going to fill. Uh, you can see your rate up there, and then you come and put their aggregate down. Then after that cures out, they'll come in and put their next layer of epoxy and then finish it off. And you can see how the, the rates go up for the last layers. Um, and then the whole the total thickness is 3 eighths of an inch. So this is actually adding a little bit of thickness. Not much, but a little bit of thickness to the deck. Some of our overlays don't add any. This is uh, right out of our special provision. You can see the cure times. Obviously, you know, you start getting them 60 to 64, that's a long time. Four hours and then six and a half hours. That doesn't leave much time for shot blast or lane closure, shot blasting, um, pulling lane closure out and getting traffic back open. So if you're in this lower range, if you've got to get it back open the next day, you might not be able to do the to do it. You've got to um, do it when it's a little bit warmer up here, so you have the time. Um, a lot of the manufacturers' data will have shorter cure times than what's in our provision. If they submit a request, the resident engineer approves it, which we have before. They can shorten some of those times to go along with what the manufacturers recommend for their cure times. So, but have that conversation ahead of time, not the night of when they're ready to get it in place. And we don't want to turn traffic on that first layer. You want both layers. Okay, our provision says that. Uh, some of the limitations, again, 60 degree surface deck temperatures and aggregate components, that's pretty warm. Um, this is not a winter application. Um, you got to make sure the air is not dropping down below 55 within eight hours, and then you got to make sure that um, it's not going to gel in less than 10 minutes. So, really more of a warm application. Uh, if it's over 90 degrees, we need to have a conversation about that. This is a, obviously an over-exaggerated uh, picture here. Um, I'm not going to be doing any positive airlays here, but you can't have any water. So, if it's rained, you know, if there's moisture in the deck, there's no go for that operation that night. Um, these are some of the options for our moisture check. You know, if you can visibly see water, then we don't need to be placing it. If, if it just rained and still, you know, there's moisture in the deck, we don't need to place it. Some contractors have a moisture meter. I think RAM, I've seen them use them. Um, you can do the polyethylene sheet, wrap it with duct tape around the sides, look, watch for um, <laughs> water vapor that's kind of come up on the inside of that. Uh, um, had a recommendation yesterday. You can take a, a torch and just kind of go around it. If it's, if it's you've seen a change, it's drying back, and you can see the difference. If you, you do that and there's no change in it, then there's no moisture in it. So whatever you to make you feel comfortable. There's nothing, no requirement or provision of how you do it. It just says it has to be dry. So contractors should take the lead on that and you can follow up behind them and check. This is our bond pull test. Um, our special provision requires uh, the two locations on the bridge. Um, you, you do this test, it's a one and a half by three foot pat, and they're going to have to use the same methods they put down the overlay on. So you put your epoxy down, spread your aggregate, let it cure, put your next layer of epoxy and aggregate down. Uh, they usually lock up the duct tape the outside of this and you know, keep it off so uh, they can find that area. And then they're going to pull, 
Uh, epoxy will puck to it, and then they're going to pull it off, and then they're going to see what the bond strength is. Our provision requires that it be at least 250 psi, and that at least 50% of the where it's tearing off here is below the bond line. You can see here, this is our epoxy right up here, that, or right in here, and then you can see where this broke off in the concrete substrate. Mm -hmm. So that's what we're looking for. We don't want it to break off at the bond where the epoxy was. We want it to break off in the concrete. And so 50% of that has to be a quarter inch or, or deeper. This one's 100% um, and, and much more than a quarter inch. That's what we're looking for here. You can see here, this is kind of a diagram that shows the different failure planes. This one's good. It broke down in the substrate. Um, this one's bad. It broke right at the bond line. This one's bad. It broke right in the middle of the overlay. And then this one's just a failed test. It's, they did to re-epoxy the puck down to the overlay. Sometimes that might happen if you didn't get let it set up enough um, for the test. But uh, you'll uh, you kind of use that as a good kind of criteria. Um, all right, what's wrong here? Does that look good? Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, uh, we, you know, epoxies are pretty, they're, they're fairly straightforward. They're not too too complicated, but it, and we don't see many problems, but occasionally we'll, we will get some delamination here. Don't know exactly what happened. My, my assumption is it was probably wet whenever they placed it. There was some moisture in there. It started to come up. Um, we had a conversation yesterday, and if, if you're having to overlay an approach slab, pretty much all the manufacturers and the contractors will tell you that approach slabs and epoxy overlays don't really do well together. I guess the moisture in the slab comes up through, especially an old, cracked up, you know, uh, approach slab. You'll tend to get more moisture coming up, and they have a tough time. It's, it's, we've seen it all across the state. They don't bond that great. Not to say they can't, but you might see that. You might if you, if you we added some on a contract, and the contractor warned us that it may not bond, and sure enough, it some places didn't. Um, but have that conversation. Not to say we can't do it, but um, yeah, you may have problems. This one here, uh, similar, but it was, was kind of like a spongy feel to that underneath. I'm just assuming that's just the epoxy and moisture mixing, um, not letting the epoxy do its thing and, uh, and get hard and kind of create a sponginess under there and it would be laminated. What's wrong with this one? Does it look good? Kind of, from a distance it kind of does, right? It kind of looks like what we're looking at, but if you kind of zoom in here, zoom in here, see some of these spots, these kind of tan color stuff? That was kind of that like spongy, foamy feeling, when it, and it just kind of, um, I guess the moisture reaction, it just kind of started coming up through the aggregate, and uh, you know you had to kind of look at it close to go to see it, and but it, it was kind of a foam from that moisture. So again, that that water, that moisture and epoxy doesn't mix. So I'm not sure really what happens. I got this picture from somebody else. It's it's hard. You see they scraped it with a pocket knife or key or something. So it was hard. Um, but for whatever reason, the aggregate didn't bond. Uh, you know, I'm not sure if it just, I don't know what's going on here, but in that little area, it's, it's, that's a pretty small area, but um, for whatever reason, the aggregate didn't bond. 